And welcome back to another edition of the Literally Hitler and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Peace show. be upon me, I am the Prophet Muhammad. And today's show is brought to you by Walgreens Hemorrhoidal Suppositories. Hemorrhoidal Suppositories because... And welcome back to another edition of the Literally Hitler and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Peace show. be upon me, I am the Prophet Muhammad. And today's show is brought to you by Walgreens Hemorrhoidal Suppositories. Hemorrhoidal Suppositories because... Piles of your dead, vanquished, idol-worshipping enemies is great. However, piles in your ass, not so much. That's why I always use Walgreens Hemorrhoidal Suppositories. Let your passion for God be inflamed, not your anus. Uh, back to you, Hitler. Agreed, and get your I Love Hitler t-shirts while they last. We they have t -shirts fast. Oh, cool. I didn't even know we had t-shirts yet. Yes, buy them now. <laughs> At uh, the very low price of uh, 1995. Be the first kid at school with a Hitler t shirt. <laughs> right. Okay, so today. And now, now we gotta come up with the design. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we don't have those ready? Shit. No. no. Stay tuned for Hitler t shirts. <laughs> I was right. jumping the gun again yeah, yeah. a little bit. My apologies. Yeah. They will be coming soon. Well, if you ask for them, I'll just I'll get them printed up and sent them to you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, we just want to talk to, uh, about Alex Jones today. That's all we give a shit about today is Alex Jones. And uh, uh, we got Alex Jones, the uh, best of, I suppose, is what we're dealing with here, right? Right. Yeah, this is uh, Alex Jones' funny moments, and it's got about a 400,000... Oh, hell, Lane, just scroll down. Oh, oh I'll actually move that. 422,000 by a YouTuber called Crunch Time. So there you go, you can check that out. It's 50 minutes long, 50 minutes and 17 seconds. So, but we're only here to cover like maybe five minutes of it. See, I don't know what what's going on here, but um, it's Alex Jones. It's got to be good, right? Well, of course. He, he never fails to deliver. He's so entertaining. <laughs> he so. is. Okay, so without further ado, let's play some Alex Jones. Right. I guess my medical doctor's bad, too. Because you're the amazing Randy, a big beard. You expose people that bend spoons. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, it. hold on, hold on. This isn't fair to the audience. <laughs> amazing Randy, I know who that is. Um, some people might not. You know who Amazing Randy is, right? Uh, I'm not familiar. Okay, he's I, really, I think I have heard the name Randy. But. Amazing Randy, okay, Alex Jones, okay. I, I think I know where this is going. Alex Jones is, is like, really Christian. Am I right? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. He's a, yeah, he's a fundamentalist for the most part. Okay, yeah. the amazing Randy is a really atheist. He also recently came out as gay at like something like eighty years old. It wasn't that long ago. All right, um, Wait, but maybe, that's... I, maybe I have seen him. Wasn't he part of the the Four Horsemen uh, amongst? Yes, the, yeah, for, yes, 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 yeah, for, yeah, with Dawkins, Hitchens, and um, the yeah. Sam, Sam Harris. That was him. He was one of them. All right, so he All was right. really big on exposing. He hates woo. And he's really big on exposing people who use woo as a way of conning people. It's his thing, because he used to be uh, a stage magician, and he knows what the old tricks are. So that's what James Randi is, for those of you who don't know. And it's amazing he's still alive, because he's got to be pushing 90 at this point. Um, yeah, that's fucking crazy, even this, in don't, this day and age. You want to see fucking crazy. See him walking out and about with his boyfriend, because the man is a thousand. I mean, it's like, <laughs> no, I mean, like you're looking at this guy that could have fought in the Crusades, walking around with this thirty-something-year-old Mexican guy, and uh, it's like, on one hand, you're thinking, okay, go old man, go gay old. Man. You would never think he was gay. Hmm. Okay, he came out because someone finally asked him. Essentially, he's on, he's on TED Talks, and if, as I recall, he says, "I never came out because nobody asked me to now." But he does not strike you as gay. You would not think that he was gay. He does not come across that way, but he's gay. He's looking at this dude, and he's like, this guy's younger than, like, at the oldest, this dude's like 32 at this point. You know, by my estimation. But then, I'm, we're missing the point. So, James Randi is an atheist, and he hates people who use, especially people who use religion or any kind of woo, as a way of wooing people and getting their money. He exposed... Uh, Peter Popov, who's the guy who was selling the Marigold Spring water. Any faith healer. Sylvia Brown, he tore her to live in shits. He's good at what he does. Hmm. Because he knows. He knows how, how the tricks are done. So we'll go. So let's roll Alex Jones, and he's talking about. So just so that everyone knows who Amazing Randy is, he's basically a debunker. 
Right. Yes, you and George Soros and Snopes can sit up for old angle. These crazy right wingers think there's a world government forming. They think the NSA spying on them. <laughs> I'm the amazing Randy. I look back and found stuff he said ten years ago. That that was a nice uh, Ross Perot impersonation, even though it was involuntarily. <laughs> um, I lost track of where he was going with this. He went into George Soros as if and Snopes, and yeah. then back to I'm amazing Randy. Maybe it'll make sense if we keep rolling it because yeah. I'm already cross-eyed. Yeah, let's see. Jones thinks they're spying on the public. Ridiculous. I'm the amazing Randy. And then you go watch the movie, and it's all him and his boyfriend. I mean, it's just like, what? See? That's what? It. Everyone's like, oh. Uh. It's, it's okay. like you've gone okay. on a Mars mission, or you discovered the God gene. Or okay, I, I, I do have to say, I do have to say, I'm all for people doing whatever they want with their sex as long as everybody's of legal age. That's it. There's nothing beautiful about a, 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 a thousand and one year old man and a, and a 29 year old guy, or whatever we got. It is kind of weird. Now, yeah, there, there's nothing. No anti-gay about that. It's just a, it's, it's the just age gross. thing. No, no one wants to see people that old. Yeah. It doesn't mean uh, he shouldn't. Any sex, yeah. yeah, having sex. It doesn't mean he shouldn't do it if he wants to. But I don't get. I don't have to say it's beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's a little no. fucking weird. <laughs> I mean, no, it's it's pretty gross. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he should still do it if that's what he wants to do, mm -hmm. and he should still put it in the public sphere. So that's, but I don't have to say this is touching because it's not. It's actually kind of gross. I might not have <laughs> sex tonight when I come home. Uh, because I might have that image in my mind. In fact, I might only even think I'm going to touch myself now, because I've forgotten about it. Okay, so... Right. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's going to scar you. Yeah, it's kind of scarring. You see James Randi, I love James Randi, don't get me wrong, and I think it's great that he's boinking a 30-something-year-old dude. And yeah, more power to him. Yeah. He, 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 he's and taking he, advantage of Yeah, him. and he's old enough that he might have been tortured during the Spanish Inquisition. I mean, it, it's, uh, yeah. it, it's all the right. more better for him. But yeah, he doesn't have uh, many years left, so may as well go for right. somebody young. But I get to think Why it's not? gross. That's my white privilege. <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, so let's see where else he's got to be going somewhere with this. All right, you you saved humanity, or you crossed the Bering Strait. Oh my gosh, you're so accomplished! Wow, wow, you sleep with a guy. Whoa, <laughs> so shocking. We can't handle it. It's a plan, and I'm angry. <laughs> I'm not a slave. I've broken the conditioning. It doesn't Broke work on me. I'm primitive. I'm real. I know the enemy. And if we can have this spirit of normal humanity spread, it's over for the globalist. Break what? the conditioning now. Did, did that make any <laughs> sense to you? And then he's uh, like, just, everything's going to be fair. Just, you know, more of his insane rambling. Incoherently, yeah. Well, yeah, but I'd like to know what he's trying to say. But okay. Yeah, I, I guess in all fairness, you know, these are very you know short clips individually. Right. So yeah, there's no context. It's just showing his wildest side. Yeah. Let's keep it rolling. Under Obamacare, <clears throat> because computers that are already commanding the doctors will tell you everything to do, and it'll decide whether you live or die. Well, who programs the computers? See, that's the whole zeitgeist movement that the New York Times promotes. A computer will decide where you work, where you live, and what you do, and we'll all live in big communal buildings. That sounds like prison, doesn't it? It is, but it's, see, if well, you say it with long hair, you talk real soft. It and, does, but I haven't heard anyone proposition that. Did I miss something? Am I not watching enough news? Yeah, I don't know where he uh, got that from. Unless you're just older than his ass. I mean, the, the computers, yeah, computers telling us where we need to work. Like, I, yeah, I'm lost on that one. All right, maybe, maybe we need to be showing bigger clips, but we'll, we'll keep going. All right. And condescending and lisping, and fake intellectual, <laughs> and then do uh, Alex. If you don't agree, you'll be sent to a re-education camp. The NPR. Voice. Hold on. Who said that? <laughs> Who said if you don't agree with me, you're going to be sent to a re-education camp? Okay. I don't know. No George, one? George Soros? No. No, no, no. no. It's no one. All right. <sighs> you know, I admire, I admire Alex Jones in a lot of ways. Not because I agree with, like, almost anything he says, <laughs> but because, my God, he's built an empire off of, like, this. Yeah. We're going about this the wrong way. You know that, right? We need to be scaring the shit out of people. That's where the money is. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I guess, you know, hell, I'll say it. You know, I have no shame in admitting it, but... I mean, no, I, I still watch Alex Jones uh, from time to time. How can like, you not? J just for, you know, entertainment purposes, maybe. Exactly. And occasionally, you know, he'll come up with some, some groundbreaking story, but... 
But like it's it's like you know you have to sift through like a, a fucking mound a big pile of shit just to find a diamond and like that's basically what you get when you watch him. Yeah, but maybe he's got the right idea. Okay, let's see what he says though. Okay. And then later the guy uh, Peter Joseph comes back and says, "I'll come on your show if you apologize for saying I said you'd be reeducated." And I went back and watched the interview and he said, "You'll be sent for reeducation." He went on the phone. He goes, "I never said that. We know the truth." Yes. Okay, so this guy said that he said he'd be educated, then he denied it. Am I understanding this right? Okay, let's... Well, I was shooting through my eyes, so that I heard we're gonna, more crunching. What so. we're going to do is we're going to stop this. Most of the shit's getting edited out, and I want to dig this for this myself. Because mm -hmm. this is kind of like Alex Jones' funny moments here. I want to see if there's any truth to this. Because most people avoid the term re-education. They don't like the implications, even if you are some kind of socialist commie that's in the Illuminati or whatever the fuck you're involved in. So let's see what else he has to say. To Count Dracula to Von Helsing, come here. I did not say that, come here. You have a strong will for one who's only lived one life. I mean, you think that stuff really works on me? Like he your job of the Dracula heart? Dracula references. Oh, 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 teeny Jedi. Think so? <laughs> You think all your games work on me? It doesn't work on me! And once the human spirit ignites, it doesn't work on anybody! I don't drink the floor, goddammit! I don't do God anything it. but open the blinds to wake people up. And you don't like the light, do you? <laughs> Pull those blinds up. I like sun. I love it. And red-blooded humans, I don't care what color they are, will never be your slaves. I saw Google got caught in a bunch of new stuff. And then they, when they talked to their, uh, one of their presidents, they said, But we wear fluffy socks. That's in my what? stack. They're like, what about Google getting hacked and all your passcodes being taken? Well, and Google. Sucks. Where I am from? very cross-eyed right now. <laughs> Maybe the problem here is that we are listening to the funny moments. Maybe. One of these days we gotta go all the way through, but we're we're, we're following through. We're, we're we're not going through the whole fifty minutes of this video, are we? <laughs> oh no, no, not at all. All right, good. But, but yeah, we we can uh, switch it up uh, another day and when we have more time. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe a uh, Saturday or Sunday when we have. Well, actually, maybe Sunday. Sunday preferably. definitely. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'll be, I'll be a lot more open. All right. Spying on people. We wear fluffy socks. Almost every photo of Warren Buffett, a master wicked operative. Involved with his banks with money laundering, tra narcotics trafficking, that's in Bloomberg, AP Reuters. But in almost every photo, he goes, I'm just a little old man. And he goes, ice cream. Google Warren Buffett's name and click what? images, almost every image. And he goes, ice cream. <laughs> ice cream. And it's like Google goes, We're, I'm wearing a pink and a green sock. Are we going about this the wrong way? Is this not where the money is, what we're doing right now? Do we need to do this? Do we need to talk about ice cream and Bloomberg's and... Illuminati and poison in the water and flat Earth. Uh, well, dude, dude, yeah, the vaccines give your give you your kids cancer. I can tell you, Alex yeah. Jones lives in a better neighborhood than anyone we know. Maybe we're going <laughs> about this the wrong way, right? Because if we he can indulge in uh, conspiracy theories, that's where the money is. For listen sure. to him, and he's making money. We're going maybe. All right. Uh, okay, let's let's hear some more. And I got a. And I got a little beard, and I talk like this. You know what those guys do when they get on jets? They go, bring me 15 hookers now and get the drugs ready and take me to the private island. See? Th that sounds like the life. We that are going about this the wrong way. Holy shit. I told you, we're going about this wrong way. That's what they do. 15 hookers and drugs? I'm aboard. I'm okay no. with three as long as they're hot. <laughs> Get the satanic rituals ready. I'm literally fucked. Satanic rituals? Yes. I'm all for all right, that look, too. No, 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 dude. You don't understand. Satanic <laughs> rituals are a pain in the ass. You gotta memorize the rituals. You can't be reading them out of the book. They're usually really long and drawn out. Not to mention you gotta have an acolyte next to you that knows their lines. Forget about reminding them that they're not doing their job right. So you gotta do the whole thing over again. It's, um, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work. Satanic actually. rituals are a lot of work. People don't understand. It's like it's a pain in the ass. Hookers is great, you know, satanic rituals, uh, good. D dude, don't get me started. They're a lot of work. They're a lot of work. Unless, if, you, if you're going to do it in any kind of effective kind of friggin' way, yeah. 
So yeah, uh, when you put it that way, yeah, it's, uh, it sounds like a lot of stress. You just try memorizing a three-paragraph incantation, and you tell me that you want to mess around with satanic rituals. It's not because you're worried about the karma. It's not because you're worried about invoking demons. Because my God, you memorize that shit. You 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 know you you not you know, so that you don't have to go back and do it again. No. Okay. And they get on that aircraft, and I mean they are just like just like shut the door. Let's get this going. Give me the up, heads up, future predicting dialer. I want the sat phone on, scramble to NSA headquarters, prepare to run ops, and they just sit there fixing Hold the on. stock market and making Whoa, billions. wait. While the hookers are servicing you at the same... Would that be a little distracting? <laughs> Trying to work the stock market. <laughs> all right. So uh -huh. Alex Jones has it all figured out. So apparently the elites get fucked and blown by 15 hookers at the same time, not just a couple. And while they're figuring out how the NSA is going to spy on you. Dude. <laughs> is he on Adderall? Probably. I, I don't know. I have to say, I, I miss doing drugs he, when I listen to him. He, he's probably on that tiger blood. I don't know. Yeah. Or the, well, no, no, it's, it's got to be that uh, super male vitality. He's fucking hopped up on it. All right. You remember Super uh, Super Mill Vitality, right? That's his like number one sold product. He's always promoting. Is it. he really? Yeah. No, he's a, he's a, he's definitely one of those typical uh, snake oil salesmen. I mean, I, I I don't know if I can say it's. Uh, no, I didn't want to pause it. Or, I'm gonna but, pause it because I got piss. Okay. All right. Good. Like, what is it? Is it bad? Damn it. Okay. Why is it? Okay. Good. We we played. What has it been about? Five Alex Jones clips right here. Something like that. He's either crazy or he's playing the part of a crazy person. Now, maybe it's not fair that we're just playing something where they actually have, like, where it's just clips and maybe it could be said he's taking my context, but let's not get ourselves. We, we've all listened to Alex Jones before. <laughs> this is perfectly in line with <laughs> that he does. <laughs> Alex Jones has become synonymous with crazy conspiracy theorists. You can almost, like, not, like... You can almost get around. If you're arguing something with somebody and they say something is a little off the deep end, you say, "Come on, man. Okay, Alex Jones." Most people already know what you're talking about. And I guess at this point, the only question is, does he know? I was talking to one of my kids today, and you know, he was telling me like, "No, nah, apparently there's this guy that goes golfing with Alex Jones. I think it was golf. I think it's this thing." And he says, "Alex Jones actually believes this shit." And I'm like, "Well, you don't want to be known for how." At this point, he doesn't live in a bubble. He hangs out with people who thinks he's full of shit. Hmm. He hangs out with Doug Stanhope, or at least he used to, and he thinks he's full of shit. Right. Well, he he hangs out with the uh, who's a Joe Rogan, and and Joe Rogan says, you know, in his words, he's that like, was no, Joe Rogan. Joe that Rogan was the one. No, he Joe Rogan. No, he was saying he's like, no, Alex Jones, he's for real. Like he believes all this. Well, I, that's what he's been saying at least. Like whenever I listen to him on his, you know, the Joe Rogan podcast. And did you ever see one? Joe had Alex on his podcast. I didn't. No, um, it was dude. It's crazy. Uh, that that it already has. It was the most viewed. He's not going to uh, break character on the Joe Rogan show, though. Right, but I gotta say, like I, I think uh, that there is a that uh, there is a clip you can see where I don't know about the opening ten minutes or something. You know, so far, like Joe Rogan was fact checking everything that Alex was saying along the line, and and then it's seen. Joe was like, "Wow, fucking so far, you're you're not wrong. Like, goddamn, this is crazy. Like, he, he's uh, talking about the the pedophile ring that got broken up in in Which LA one? or something. There's one about uh, three or four months ago where I think it was like 150 people got arrested or prosecuted, and then like 50 children were rescued. And like, yeah, it was yeah, certainly. And he a, predicted a, it before it happened. He didn't predict it, but uh, he just he 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 was talking about it." He's basically mentioning that child sex trafficking rings are more common than what we think. Well, I've and, always and he, he, thought they were common. Oh yeah, like I mean, uh, it seems that way when uh, you're you're that untouchable, I guess, as a politician, and you have all this money. And, like, I, I think it's just you're. I don't know. Like maybe you just want to see like you know, what you can get away with, well, and, like, no, just, just to get that edge, just to thing. get that adrenaline rush. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. You read human history, sex, just sex and human history. Child molestation, a.k.a. pedophilia, somewhat different, but we'll move men's words here. It, it, was, it was commonplace in ancient Greece. 
to the point where there were families that if you didn't if you didn't make sexual advances towards their little boys and their family that the parents got offended. I like red shit like this, all right? Oh, well. Yeah. Um, like, the, in ancient Rome, you actually, I think it was called a buffa or something like that, where you actually would hang something, it was called something like that, start with a B. You would hang this around a boy's neck, which meant, you're not allowed to try to fuck my little boy, which meant that, that not being able to fuck your kid was a default, was not the default. Hmm. All right? There's more pedophiles living in our world than we want to come to terms with, than we want to acknowledge. Because the reality is we we don't need those notices in the mail with the, with a black and white picture of the guy living about, you know, two blocks away to know that they are living in our neighborhoods. Oh, yeah, I get those. There's uh, one uh, just a uh, street over from mine. Yeah. Yeah, on the other side of the houses. Every society in every culture and history has stories of people fucking kids. I don't like it. But it's a fact. It is an unavoidable fact. So, yeah, rich people are also going to have pedophiles, and all you have to do is find a couple of rich people who get along enough to admit to each other what they're into, and boom, you got a pedophile ring. There you go. There you go. So it's not difficult for me to imagine that this exists at all. We don't want to believe it exists because if rich people are starting a pedophile ring, it's going to be very difficult to bust. They're going to cover their bases. It's not going. To, you know, we don't want to think that that's going on. We don't mind thinking that the guy in the trailer park, you know, might be doing it because he, he has no defense. If we catch him, fine. But if we catch some big Hollywood m movie mogul doing it. He's going to be able to afford, like, a high-powered lawyer, mm -hmm. you know. He's going to be able to afford dragging it out in court long enough to the people prosecuting him, trying to expose him, eventually run out of breath and have to go back to work. And we don't want to know, we don't want to think about that happening, but look, man, if there's pedophiles living... Uh, if there's pedophiles at NASCAR, in the NASCAR audience, there's pedophiles in the penthouse in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And for all those listening, there is actually a great video I, you know, we both highly, highly recommend. I believe you've seen it too, the Sargon of the Cod video, where he talks about all of the pedophile rings. That, Pizzagate. That, yeah, the Pizzagate. And why Pizzagate may not be real, but it's not a difficult concept to to accept that exists. I saw that. Yeah, yeah. He was basically explaining how Pizzagate. He says, well, he's not fully on board. He's not saying he, whether he believes it or disbelieves it, but it it certainly is in the realm of possibility. No, no, no. The all, concept all. is perfectly acceptable, even if Pizzagate's not real. Right. Yeah, because it, it's about a 30-minute video, and he just uncovers all all the history, you know, the last, I don't know, maybe like 20 or 30 years of all the underground pedophile rings that have been, you know, broken up uh, from different countries all over the world through where people actually went to court, you know, got found guilty, prosecuted, and it's, it's insane and pretty depressing, especially in the end when uh, there, there's a woman who... I guess got so tormented from it that she ended up, uh, uh, I guess, uh, ended up creating like 10 different personalities and became an MPD artist. MPD is a commonplace thing with people who've gone through that, yeah. yeah. If you want to really read about some creepy shit, read about ancient Rome and what some of the ancient emperors used to get onto. And you really ask yourself honestly, if it's so easy to believe that a Roman emperor did this, why is it so hard to believe that an American senator did this, or a president might have yeah. done this? You know, without pointing fingers at any particular people. You know, um, Tiberius Caesar had naked kids walking around all, all over the place at his, uh, what the fuck was it called? The Island of Capri, where he trained Caligula. We all know that name. And... Right. Uh, the, the most research I've done was a uh, view of the movie with uh, Malcolm McDowell. Okay, but <laughs> okay, okay. The, but I, I remember he was a ruthless fuck. I, okay, yeah, but you remember with Malcolm McDowell, he played Caligula. What you didn't see in the movie, because you couldn't portray this, where you had all these naked people performing sex acts in front of him for his amusement. Same thing, the only difference is in real life, most of them were children. Yeah, I believe it. Why is it so hard to believe, then that there are leaders today doing this, they just have to be more careful. Because back then, if you were fucking kids, it wasn't a big deal. That's a horrible reality. 
But that's the reality. If you fucked kids in ancient Rome, it was not... People didn't think it was a big deal unless you were fucking the kid where the parents said, you can't fuck my kid. Then it was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Most parents didn't go through the trouble. Now, I can't wrap my head around that, but the reality is that was a thing back then when you had to go through the trouble to put this crazy-looking necklace around your kid's head that says, you're not allowed to fuck my kid, dude. I'm sorry. <laughs> what a weird concept. In the modern world, we can't wrap our heads around it, but this goes on in places like Pakistan to this day. I just learned recently, there's something like a, like one in three children are molested, boys and girls, in Pakistan. Yeah, that's 33% of all children. Wow. Yeah, in Saudi Arabia, child buggery goes on all the time. They actually don't believe that's the same thing as, as fornication, as long as it's a kid. They actually think that's war they actually think it's okay to fuck a kid, but not a, an adult. Yeah, yeah. And on top of that, the uh, it's uh, cousin fucking is very prominent over there. Like, what, what's the rate over there? Like a sixty percent? What was the? I'm sure you've read the statistic. Well, cousin fucking is common, but that used to be the case here. So I don't want to get on my high horse. Oh well, yeah, but that's in the past. But we're talking about presently in this day, in modern day Pakistan, it's pretty prominent for the most part. I miss it, it's it's not frowned upon. I, know, in other in other words, in Pakistan, I like, don't want to give them shit for co fucking their cousins because if it's a choice between give them shit for fucking like six year old boys, and give them shit for fucking their nineteen year old cousins, I, I, you know what? No, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah. Child, Go child, ahead. child fucking is a far <laughs> more yeah. extreme. Yeah, I understand that. But I'm just saying, like. Their philosophy is so backwards. I just, I just decided to kind of throw in the cousin fucking or just yeah. relative fucking on top of the child. You fucking. know, fuck your cousin. Just <laughs> don't produce a, an offspring, and we're good. As right. long as you're both consenting age for whatever consenting age is in your dirt country, fine. But when it comes to fucking an eight-year-old boy or an eight-year-old girl, whatever. It, you know, go yeah, crazy. Yeah, where there's no way that they, they could ever possibly consent. Yeah, have yeah. you have the biggest cousin orgy that you've ever conceived. Go nuts. Just use a condom and don't produce any offspring. Agreed. Um, yeah. Um, go crazy. Have the biggest kissing cousin orgy fest that you've ever had in your life. You know, go, bust a nut in all the cousins you want as long as everybody's of consenting age. But once you're getting into issues like nine-year-old kids... <laughs> It's a whole nother thing. Right. <laughs> the point of the matter is that I brought this up is this has been going on in many, many, many societies through history and it's hard for me to believe. It's actually difficult for me to believe that this is not going on now and that there are not elite upper class societies of kids, people fucking kids. Right. And I... It's like, yeah, I mean, back in the ancient Rome days, what society was bigger than the, the ancient Rome society? Exactly. And, uh, and look at us, we're the biggest fucking society. We're the biggest, uh, the, the most powerful country on the planet. Right. So, and, yeah, yeah, I'm sure most of our politicians can... Yeah. Most of our politicians can, uh, can literally get away with murder. Well, they've and literally other gotten away with murder. Yeah. Just look at the Clintons. Kennedys. Kennedys, yeah. You know, you get into... But the bottom line is, you can get away with murder, but getting away with fucking kids, you got to be careful with that. <laughs> All right. Right. So, because once you're known as someone who fucks kids, it's over. Now, you have manipulation over the media, sure. But at the end of the day, m the mere accusation, you know. So, Pizzagate's a believable thing. I don't believe in Pizzagate at all. But I believe... I'm, I'm actually a firm believer. Uh, from, from Specifically the... Pizzagate, you mean? Yeah, Pizzagate. Yeah, just uh, based on uh, the the Podesta emails I've read, and uh, with a. You think that that incident actually happened? Oh, I'm sure they've been fucking kids. Uh, based on the at like, that pizza like, place. Oh, not the pizza place. No, no, no. The, but how Pizzagate started it is, uh, like, uh, they base it off of the the certain way they were talking in the emails. They'll talking about, so like, oh, there will be a uh, you know, fifteen breadsticks there. We'll be ordering twenty twenty uh twenty pizzas. Would you like? Would you like uh, this type of dressing? And and then you know, there was do you a, think that this place was actually running a child um, a child prostitution ring? 
No, I'm not talking about the pizza place itself, but that's a totally separate issue. That's what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean. So, in other words, pizza gets bullshit, but the concept does exist. That's what you're saying, right? right? Concept, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm not saying, yeah, the, the pizza place itself, it didn't, I'm not saying it hosted any sex trafficking ring, but, no, just, uh, no, they just, uh, yeah, the pizza thing got started because of the, the wording. It was, uh, it was all it had to do with food. You know, there's, like, yeah, uh, hot dogs, you know, that was another one, and, like, just the way. Well, you've got to have all, code words. You've got to yeah, have code, yeah, code words, words when you're running, because we the, we all know that even when you're doing anything illegal, yeah. you know, you're gonna have code words involved. Yeah, and the weirdest thing out of that email, uh, I'd have to look it up again, but it was saying something like, uh, "It's like, oh yeah, we will bring the the kids over to the pool," and it's like, "Yeah, they're ages, you know, seven, you know, nine and 11. It's like, oh, they're very feisty or something along those lines. I'm like, well, that sounds suspicious as fuck. And what does that mean? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't know. So you do think that the Pizzagate accusation might have had some validity to it? I think so. I think Podesta was certainly involved. Uh, I think Hillary Clinton probably as well. But, uh, you know, these are... But, but, but Hillary Clinton's a girl. I mean, uh, how many chicks are involved in this if there's not a guy manipulating him? And there's no way she's under the uh, under the thumb of a dude. Hillary Clinton's kind of her own despot, you know? I guess maybe that name popped up just because, you know, she was a, uh, you know, running, you know... This is the... I gotta uh, tell you, I gotta tell you. I don't think but, Bill Clinton is... I'm not gonna accuse Bill Clinton of being a pedophile. But I would to- But if it, if we found out that Bill Clinton was, it wouldn't exactly shock me. Yeah, you know what? I'm highly suspicious of Joe Biden. Have you seen the videos of, of him, like, you know, being really awkwardly, like, kind of borderline sexual with uh, these, like, no, th- th- these uh, girls' parent. Uh, th- th- I mean, the the parents of these little girls, like, he's this twelve year old girl, like, he's like talking to her, like, you know, like straight up nose, like pressed against her ear, just talking, like. And he tried to kiss her, like, you know, on the lips, and she, like, turned her face. She's like, no. But it he, was fucking creepy. Were the cameras <laughs> on him at the time, and he knew they were on him? Yeah. Is so, so it like, would you really do something stupid like that? But then again, there's always Jared. Right. <laughs> he told a journalist that he liked girls, prepubescent girls, so who knows, you know? I mean, we all like to well, talk about our sexual fetishes if we think we can get away with it. Let me just uh, bring up this video. Let me see uh, what you think of it. Uh, certainly right. I want think... some Subway sandwiches. Okay, I think this is the one right here. Thank you. This is the one right here. Thank you. Thank you. It's fucking weird. That's just, just, just weird. weird. Just, I got the did, you try to, did you see that? Oh my god. All right, well, nice let me rewind that. I mean, it's not enough to say he's definitely a chill, but... Oh, absolutely. Okay. And that's not the only incident either. There's uh, there's been other videos of him being really creepy. It's it's not enough to say it's a smoking gun, he's a chill, but I gotta admit. I gotta admit, that's fucking weird. It's like, just picture being the the guy's father. I mean, the, the, the little girl's father right there. And... You can kind of see it on the on the guy's face, like, oh, like a, you're the vice president. Like, if you were anybody else, I would fucking sucker punch the fuck out of you. Do but. you think it's possible <laughs> that basically American politics is a giant ring of a bunch of pedophiles at this point? Yeah, I believe it. I don't. It, it, I'm not partisan. If the I believe left, it's entirely possible. If it's a bunch of people on the left, it's a bunch of people on the right. I don't give a fuck. But you think maybe it's come to this? Maybe that's what's going on with Saudi Arabia. Hmm. Everyone's heard the stories of what goes on in Saudi Arabia, uh, right? Uh, I think so. Like where they they basically sell uh, underage women, right? Okay, I have heard it from somebody. I had a customer years ago. I'm not gonna get into what I do for a living because I don't want to be doxxed. But I have a lot of well-to-do customers. And about ten years ago, I had a customer come in, and he told me again. Anyone can say this shit, but why would you say this shit? He said to me, nonchalant, he's about a 45, 50 year old man. He says, listen, I'm bisexual, all right? And this is, so, so I'm open to a lot of weird stuff, but this was past my point. I'm like, yeah, go on. And my customer said to me, okay, so I was in Saudi Arabia on a business trip and I was in a hotel. 
again, this is an anecdote. Nobody out there knows I'm not making this up. So take this with a grain of salt because you don't know I'm not lying. I know that I'm hearing it from the mouth of the person who told it to me. He said, I go to Saudi Arabia, and the very first thing that happened when I was at this party is these royals, these princes in the royal family, uh, presented me with a, I think he said a 12-year-old boy. And he, he told me, go ahead and go up to my room. He says, the first thing I did is I, I says, listen, this is not my thing. And then another American went up to him and said, dude, don't refuse the little boy. He says, don't just, refuse you don't have to have sex with the little boy, but you do have to take him up to your room. It, they're they're going to consider it an insult if you don't take the little boy up to your room. He says, so I took the little boy up to my room. He says, I was weirded out as all hell. All right? But I did what I, I did what I felt like I had to do. He says, I was so creeped out because all the kid did is hung out in my room playing video games and I would just have a conversation while he was on the floor playing video games in my room. He says, and make sure to say thank you for giving me the little boy. You know? Wow. He says, now, I didn't do anything, he, he said to me, I didn't do anything with this little boy. Alright? Now, take it to be true that what this guy said is true. Alright? He has no reason to lie about this. He says to me, all I could think the whole time was I have a son that age. He says, later on during the trip, he said, while well, he was at Saudi Arabia, he said, he asked the question, what happens to these kids when they grow up? And the answer that was given to him is nobody knows. They hit puberty and nobody ever sees them again. Well, now, that's freaky. this is a customer of mine that I had 10 years ago. I don't remember his name, but I genuinely don't remember his name. This is not me like, well, no, don't remember that. I really don't remember this guy's name. <laughs> um, I he was only a customer of mine for one time that I saw him, and it was a long time ago. Um, it was in two thousand six. Um, the bottom line is they expected him to fuck the little kid. Hmm. Now, in Saudi Arabia, this is the norm. Oh yeah, I'm sure. If you're a guest at their hotel, they assume you're gonna fuck a kid. They they they, they give you a really nice hotel. He told me about the extravagance that they had, and they assume that the first thing you're gonna want to do when you go to Saudi Arabia, now that your country's not watching you, is that you're gonna want to fuck a kid. That must mean that there are enough Americans going to Saudi Arabia that are happy to oblige. That's disturbing. But I've heard this from enough people. Damn. So yeah, Pizzagate, even though I don't believe in the particular story, is perfectly believable. So yeah, okay. there's my Chomo story. Oh. That's as close <laughs> as I've ever gotten, and I don't want to get any closer. Alright, oh, let me put this on pause. Alright, so here's one small clip. Uh, yeah, tell me that this doesn't sound weird. Uh, this is uh, from the Joe Rogan podcast where he had Alex Jones and uh, Eddie Bravo on. So this is back to the pizza gate thing that I was referencing earlier. God, Jamie, so, pizza. <laughs> right. As we plan to wrong? heat the pool. So this is back to the pizza gate thing that I was referencing earlier. God, Jamie, so, pizza. <laughs> right. As we plan to wrong? heat the pool, so mm -hmm. uh, possibly Three children. So I'm assuming Ruby's eleven, so, em Emerson's nine, and. Mm, was it say my, my okay, okay. almost Wait, seven? Who's it from and who's it to? Why would you send a message like that over Twitter? What the fuck? No, no, that wasn't Twitter. No, this was actually uh, this was uncovered on a. No, this is someone just I uh, just retweeting. This was a, a hacked email from uh, who's the guy who uncovered the Pizzagate thing or uh, Julian Assange. Uh, oh. he, he's, he's the guy. So this is like straight up from the works of Julian Assange. That I didn't know Julius Assange. Unveiled Pizzagate. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, he just wow. He just he uncovered like all the emails. Trans like you can look. I haven't uh, read through all of them because it, wow. it would take forever to read through. But and yeah. Who is, so whose email is this? Uh, that I'm not sure. Uh, wait, what's it say on the Tamara Luzado, whoever that is, wrote and yeah. So whoever that is, uh, I guess like we could look up. Well, let me just pause that for a second. All right, so we're back. Uh. Yeah, I did some Google searching of Tamara Luzado, and I didn't, 
I didn't find anything as far as like if she has any ties with you know Podest, you know Podesta or the Clintons, but she may or may not have. But the only uh, Google search I came up with was was about different articles uh, about how she offered her children to this pool party, and God knows what happened there. I do but, offer your kids to a party, basically knowing they're gonna get molested. Yeah, that's fucked. She must have been getting paid a lot. Yeah, so now, so this is uh, the first time you've ever heard about this, right? I knew about Pizzagate. I knew it was mostly dismissed. And Sargon of Akkad had done a good video where he basically says, I'm not saying Pizzagate happened or didn't. I'm saying people dismissed it too easy. Right. Um, so what we're really looking at is that Julian... Because most people basically can believe Julian Assange doesn't... It's Assange. Close Assange, yeah. my bad, mm -hmm. doesn't present shit unless he really believes that he's uncovering something. He's not Alex Jones. Right. I mean, God knows the guy's been on the run for how long. Right. And I doubt there's much in it for him, right? Like, isn't he, isn't he just basically doing this out of the goodness of his heart? I mean, God, he's doing I can't this imagine of, he's really getting paid. He's doing this out of pure ideological... I have... Something that the public needs to see if they, that somebody else has tried to hide and I'm presenting it. Yeah, he just ba he's basically another Edward Snowden. He's I was just about to compare him with Edward Snowden. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing in it for him. He could have easily just not gone this way and made money doing something else. But instead he's on the run. Mm -hmm. Judging by what I know. So, yeah. Um, okay, so we might actually have... An international pedo ring. Wow. Right. <clears throat> and we may, you know, we may find out uh, it's true someday. Hope I hope it does get uncovered officially, like in courts. But have you ever heard Corey eh, Feldman talk about this shit? Oh yeah, he's he talked about that. Uh, I remember seeing the video about how he's like, you know, being that young, like I didn't know that you know what what I was being exposed to but now that I'm older it's like yeah like it was it was all real he said it's a big culture in Hollywood for example now Hollywood's yeah. not the same thing as Washington but still you know he says fucking children is a normal thing in certain circles mm -hmm. and he's afraid to name them and I understand why because if yeah, you can't he prove put it target on his back and but then you can't was... prove it you know yeah right right it's a bit like Milo Yiannopoulos talking about how he went on that boat party and all these children were, quote, very, very young. And it, he, he, he said, uh, what did it, boggles the imagination or something like that. And the bottom line is, if you had proof, then you would maybe, I would hope, name names. Maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. But, yeah. So this is kind of giving me a different perspective on the thing. I always just dismissed yeah. Pizzagate. Oh yeah. And and guys, you know, just you know, don't take our word for it, or at least my work is on the one, you know, pretty much promoting it, but you know, do the research for yourself. Uh re right. you know, look up the John Podesta emails uh through Julian Assange who's uncovered all this. Yeah, look into it. It's it gets weird. Alright. So we got like an almost we we've got three quarters of an hour here, so uh yeah. we're gonna wrap this one up, but uh I guess it's safe to say that whether these stories are true or not, pedophilia in politics might be a little bit more interwoven than we uh, might have previously thought. Yeah. Do your research, guys. Do your research. Uh, don't take our word for it because we're not actually telling you what to think, but research some shit because I'll tell you what, right now I don't know what the fuck what to think. And I'm the Prophet Muhammad and I had a nine-year-old wife. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I don't even know what to think. So if I don't know, I'm telling you, you need to do your research. I'm not telling you what to think at all. Just go and find out what to think. Yeah, guys, stay vigilant. And by the Always way, question in, in the 1400s, it was perfectly okay to have a nine-year-old wife. Nothing wrong with it back then. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so that's our show. We'll wrap that up. So She's a very mature nine-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's not always about age. It's just about how you carry yourself. And she's very supple, and she almost had breast budding, too. It's just a very complicated situation we're talking about. <laughs> Anyways. New ones, people. New ones. Yes. But anyway, so this has been Literally Hitler and... And the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon me. Signing out. Nine-year-olds. <laughs>